not? God. Is God not your adversary in your sin? Is he not against you and your, 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 your pornography is against you? Yes, he is. The Bible says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God, young people? Here, don't be a friend of this world. You're the enemy of God. Don't believe in homosexuality, sexual perversion, marijuana smoking. It's all from the devil. Don't follow this wicked way. You guys have a, you're young. You have a choice that you can make. Follow the Bible. Jesus is Lord. He's coming back to judge the world. Don't be judged and thrown into hell. Hell is a real place where there's weeping and wailing and torment in hell. But heaven is real too. God has power to deliver you from the perils of death and make you alive into heaven. You need to come to heaven. Go to heaven. Don't escape the judgment of hell. Hell. Hell is coming to earth. You know. I took time out of my day to come here because I know the danger that you guys are in. How am I in danger? You're the one who's dressed inappropriately out here. You're not covered up. The women out here dress in booty shorts. I'm the one in danger. I'm the one in danger. I do what the Bible says. How am I in danger? She's wearing booty shorts. Yes, she is. Is she not? Is she not wearing booty shorts? She's in danger. She's, she's incurring lust. She's incurring lust. Then now you're in danger too because you just cussed. I come today because I used to live like this. I used to wear the muscle shirts and use foul language and do the things that you guys are doing, but now I'm forgiven, now I'm changed by God. I have a testimony of love in my life. I love you. You gotta find, you gotta follow mercy, I love you. follow truth. I follow the truth, I tell you the truth. Oh, Why am I your enemy? Why am I your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, huh? Don't you understand what the truth is? You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you will know the truth. You'll be my disciple. No, I'm not Amish, I'm a Christian. I'm a man of God. I follow God. I don't deserve it. If it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be a sinner. I'd be a sinner forever. I'm chief sinner. I've broken God's law. I come today to tell you about God's grace. Well, yeah, there's a lot of young people out here today. Uh, I didn't know that it was going to be, I guess, uh, middle school day at FGCU. But, you know, I'm kind of glad because I want the young people to know the truth. That maybe before they come to college, they can be uh, protected from all the lies of the devil and the sin that goes on on the college campuses. A lot of, col a lot of college campus, uh, yeah, they need to hear the word of God, right? What's, ridic what's ridiculous about about it's ridiculous this. that you're doing this while we're trying to have a literacy fest. Right you don't care about the young people that they find Jesus? Why do you have so much hatred in your heart? Why do you not understand, you know, the need for Jesus Christ? You know, it concerns me that people aren't paying attention to the fact that we all have to die and, and go into, uh, you know, an eternity. And I'm here today because I want all people to know God and be, to be ready to stand before God and be saved from death. So what I'm here today to do is to cry out to old and young, rich and poor, uh, to all people. The gospel is going out to all the world, the Bible says. You know, and that's why uh, the Christians are sent out to all the world to preach the gospel to every creature, Jesus said. So as I was saying, you know, I want the young people to be guarded from the sin of this world. You know, so that maybe they can find Jesus Christ at a young age and they can commit their ways to God and not go down the crooked ways, the fallen ways of this ungodly world. This ungodly world is under the satanic influence of the devil and his angels and this ungodly world right now is falling away from the principles that are in the Bible. So now God is, uh, God is raising up Bible believers. He's raising up men of God, women of God, who will stand in the face of all the wicked things that are going on on the Internet, all the sexual perversion that's being taught and accepted, and even the, even the schools, now it's in the middle schools, high schools, they're, they're accepting homosexuality, they're accepting transgenderism, and God is furious at this. 
God is furious at this. God is angry with the wicked every day. And you need to understand that God is angry with you if you suppress the truth in unrighteousness. The Bible says, it says, What may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the beginning of creation, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, so that all are without excuse. You know, everybody knows that the, 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 the God is God is real. God is true. God is the only one that can that can uh, you know that can render judgment and give mercy. In the end, there's only going to be one of two things that await people. It's either going to be mercy or it's going to be judgment. Folks, if you're against Jesus Christ, if you're against the Bible, there's judgment awaiting you. There's judgment awaiting you without Jesus. I come out today to tell you that God is abundant in mercy. He's rich in mercy to all who call upon Him. You've got to call upon Jesus Christ. You have to make Jesus Christ the focus of your life, that by faith you would enter in and receive of the gospel of, of peace. You know, there's a gospel of peace where God makes peace with His adversaries, His enemies. We all are enemies of God by wicked works. We all are guilty. We all fall short of God's glory. It's not by the works of the law that any of us are justified, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now it says the righteousness of God apart from the law, has been revealed, being witnessed by the law itself and the prophets, even the righteousness, which is through faith in Jesus Christ, to all and on all who believe, for there is no difference for all of sin and fall short of God's glory. What part of the Bible is that from? Uh, Romans 3.23. Why are you trying to test me? Why am I trying to test you? Yeah. My father was a Methodist sure. minister. I okay. Know well, then you should know that scripture then, right? Pardon me? You know that scripture then, right? I'm not familiar with that one. I'm not sure. That's like, a Bible. Bible. That's like one of the most famous scriptures that is quote, Can Romans 2.23, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. You said your father was a Methodist preacher and you don't remember that verse? I want to argue with you. Why don't you come over here and do it? No, I'm called to preach right now, but I'm concerned about you, sir. I'm concerned. Come save me. No, I'm not here to save you. I'm here to give you, the, to give you a seed or a watering, but God gives the increase. You need Jesus Christ. If you're in sin today, if you're practicing sin, then you're following the devil. And I'm concerned for your soul. I think it's sin. How do you define Disrupting it? How do I find Well, there's some sin right here. Are you on that list? Uh, Are you any of those items? Which is the worst? Well, what do you think? Watchers. That's a bad one. What if you do them both at the same time? Fornicate and watch porn? Is that you? Well, it depends on what day yeah, of the week. I tried to, trying to, so. kind of reserve that uh, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday. Okay. Yeah, so, so, I mean, you're a mocker, too, then, right? Are Is you kind of mocking right now? <laughs> now, that's like right you're out of Romans. Oh, Corinthians, Corinthians. Look, I'm, I'm here because I, I want you to be saved. You know, if you, if you grew up in a Christian household, if you grew up in a religious background, then you'd know that there's hell, and you'd know that God... Is, is very, very serious about people when they sin. You know, the wages of sin is death. That's also in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death, folks. I'm not disrupting anything. And this is actually very important, this message I have. Why do you have no faith? Why don't you understand? If you cared about these kids, then you'd want them to hear about Jesus Christ. You'd want Jesus Christ to be magnified in this place. You'd be doing these kids the most uh, blessing on them if you would let the word of God go out. Let me ask you this one. If the shepherd loses one of his 99 sheep, what uh, does he look for? The one or the 99? That's what I'm here doing. Which one? I'm here the one at, or the 99? I don't know who the one is. The, you know Paul said? Paul said, ain't I, ain't I the one? Okay. Paul said, I preach to many to save the, some. No, if you found I, the pearl of great value, don't you give up everything? Hey, there's more than 100 people here, is there not? What about the product? Maybe, there, maybe there's maybe there's 1,000 here and there's 10, right? And, and, now you're <laughs> going just back you. to the Old Testament. And, and no, my, no, I'm using, that, I'm using that same I, analogy. No, here's the issue. One out of 100. There's more than 100 here, okay? Let me think of it this way. You've got a certain amount of power okay. that you can give, and you can spray it out to everybody yep. that's trying to ignore you, or I'll go talk to you about this. I know what Jesus said. Jesus said to, uh, Jesus said to pro proclaim the me. gospel on the housetops. I do talk to people one-on-one, -on -one too, but now's not the time for that, sir. Now's the time for everybody to hear the Word of God. Don't be found trying to stop the preaching. Don't be found as an enemy of the open-air preaching. God sent me here. It's been decreed, written, that I should come and lift up my voice that men might have all have a chance to hear the words of life. I got the word of life that God has put in my heart. 
I'm a student of the Word. You guys are students right now in school. You need to be students of God's Word. That you might know the things that are freely given to you by God. You know, don't follow the wrong examples of people in this world that look at things like pornography. Yes, you young people, you're exposed to it already. You need to flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, purity, holiness, uh, all the things that God says are lovely and honest and true. Don't be an adulterer. Don't be a fornicator, a homosexual. That's what these young people need to hear about. They're, they're hearing stuff from people that say it's okay to be gay and live in sin. It's okay to shack up and have sex out of marriage. It's a lie from the pit of hell. God wants you to be married to one man or one woman, depending the opposite sex. Be faithful to them and be a faithful man. Who can find a faithful man, the Bible says, huh? You know, you know, many profess their own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? Are you not a faithful man looking at pornography? What you're telling me that you're looking at pornography? You're like all these wicked kids out here. You're not an example to these young people out here, are you? You don't know the Bible. You can't be in it. You don't honor the Bible. You don't obey the Bible when you live in sin. Who is Noah's grandfather? What does it matter to you? I'm asking Why don't you become a disciple of Jesus Christ? You become a disciple of Jesus Christ. You honor Jesus Christ with an obedient life. Well, you, hey, hey, buddy, you know, you need Jesus Christ. Look, look, you need to obey Jesus Christ. Why won't you obey the Bible? You know, why won't you obey and be an example to the flock? You see, you got these kids that you're, maybe you're a teacher to these kids. What do these kids need? They need to know what's going to happen when they die and they got to go and stand before God. A lot of these kids are coming to the age of accountability. What about you when you were your little kid? And God started to show you in your conscience that masturbating was wrong. Your hand causing you to sin. How do you know your God's living in sin. How do you know yours is real? How do I know mine is real? Because he was raised from the dead. He raised men from the dead. He opened the eyes of the blind. He puts a word in me that saved me from my sins. You know, you know the God that I serve is the true God because he saved me from my sins. I was a fornicator, a liar, a thief, a drunkard, a pot smoker. I was all the things that this I world is like now. Three or four of those things. I know you're in danger. You need to no, repent. I'm enjoying life. Don't you understand? The Bible says if you don't repent, you'll likewise perish. But I don't believe in the Bible. I don't it doesn't matter. matter. You can say I don't believe in gravity, but if you fall off the building, you're going to go 9.8 yeah. feet yeah. per you second don't per second, right? In Thor. Your belief doesn't dictate reality, no, does it? No, Thor's going to come down here. He's going to kick your ass. No, you're going to die. That's the reality of no, your I know life. I'm going to die, and Thor's going to come. Yeah, down here and, and you know that there's a God who put eternity in your heart. God, the God. I'm talking about the true and living God, the one who, who the one who, the one who created you. There's only one Creator God. There's not many gods. There's not many gods. Thor's not the Creator God. Zeus is not Creator God. Jehovah is Creator God, and He sent His only begotten Son into the world that the world should not be condemned through them, but be saved. Have you ever heard of He who believes in the Son is not condemned. But who does not believe is condemned already, the Bible says, because they have not believed in the testimony of the one true Son of God. Thor, son of Odin. No, he's not. Yes, he No, he's not. Don't lie. Yeah, I know. To you need, to these, these people know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They know. They've heard the gospel. Thor, I'm here today to, to encourage them to put all their life into that, all their trust into that, to give their life to Jesus Christ. Because Jesus gave his life for you and I. I'm not worthy of life. I'm not worthy of Jesus' sacrifice. I am worthy of hell and death. But God showed his mercy to me. God did a wonderful work in my life. I owe him everything. I owe him everything. I owe my worship. I owe my love. I owe my admonishment. I owe my, my, my heart. My glory may be in God. Where's your glory? What do you put your glory in? You put your glory? You put, what do you put in your glory in? The things that men esteem are an abomination to God. You, what are you what are you esteeming, huh? What do you esteem in this life? What is the purpose of life? What do you find pleasure in? What do you find fulfillment in today? I know. That's what I used to live that way. And it was condemning my soul. It was condem Pornography was condemning my soul. So then I found favor with God. I found mercy from God. You know, I was in sin like you. That's why I come out today. You know what you are? You're today... You're like a man that's been beaten and been abandoned, left for dead, half, you know, you know, you're left for dead by thieves and robbers. These, these, these people in the pornography industry have merchandised your life. They've used you and abused you. And folks, 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 I'm here today to come today to bandage your wounds. To put you on my own animal and take you to the inn and see you and see you get saved from certain destruction.
certain destructions coming to you, man. Yo, you, you don't man. see it. It's, it's a heartbeat away. It's one breath away when you stand before the judgment seat of man. Christ. I, I got a whole do you not, I do you not understand? The Bible's going to come true. All will stand before the judgment seat of Yo. Christ to give an account of the deeds done in the body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Good or bad. You know, there's a battle raging right now in the spirit realm. The devil versus Jesus. The power of darkness versus the power of light. I'm for light. There's for darkness here. The Antichrist spirit out here trying to stop me from doing what God has called me to do. To cry out to you, to talk to you, to see you find knowledge, to see you find help in time of need. Who are you for? Who's your Who are your spokesman for, huh? What do you represent? Yeah, but you're obviously against me. You're against me. You're against the preaching of the Bible. No, you're a mocker. You're not. You're a mocker. I'm by myself, and I got to reach many. I want everybody to hear. I want everybody here to have a chance. These young people, everybody have a chance. Why don't you love these guys? Why don't you love these guys? They don't need to gather against me. They don't need to. They can hear me from across the football field here. Let me ask you a question. You believe God is all powerful through Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yeah. He knew that you were going to come up to me against me today. That's why he sent me here. You're probably the one that he's after. You're probably the one that's under the most conviction over here. I'm not the savior. I'm a messenger. I'm a messenger. I have a message for you, sir. If you, if you, you better fear God. You got to fear God. You got to fear God. That's what you're missing. You're, li you're living in this world that has been, been protected from judgment, protected from, from, from peril, but God is showing you that you need to fear God. Fear God because God, it says, he passed over the sins that were previously committed. Look, look, your sins that you previously committed, God is willing to pass over them. He has passed over your sins that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. I am Jesus Christ, actually. Don't lie. No, no, I'm don't not. lie. You don't create things. You don't forgive sins. Forgive You're in sin. You've said it about 15 times no, Jesus, in this five-minute conversation that you are a sinner. Jesus loves You're a sinner. Is Jesus a sinner? Is Jesus a sinner? You're saying you're Jesus? I am Jesus. Yes. Look, look. The Bible says something else. The Bible says something else. The Bible says such. Look, this man says he's Jesus. I know he's mocking, but you know what? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is such a high priest was fitting for us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, who is separate from sinners, who has become higher than the heavens. You know, Jesus Christ is separate from sinners. He is holy. He's harmless. He's undefiled. You're defiled in your sin. You're defiled in your sin. You need God to wash you clean from pornography, to wash you clean from your sexual, sexual immorality. You need cleanliness. Who will ascend into the holy hill of God? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands. I washed them earlier. Hey, you know what? That doesn't make you clean in the spirit. It makes me clean in hands. Clean hands in the spirit oh is when you don't have blood guilt. Guilty, guilty hands. Because, because you've, you've, you know, you've, you've used your hands for evil, right? Uh, You're using no. your hands for selfish, wicked, evil no, things. And you need God to cleanse to your hands. The Bible says uh, in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Therefore, beloved... It says, therefore, but having therefore these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. You need to perfect holiness in the fear of God by having the cleansing of your flesh, cleansing of, of, of your spirit, that you might know the things that are true and honest and righteous, godly and perfect. There's a way that seems right to a man, but in the end is the way of death. It's the way of death. It seems right to go to church. It seems right to, to say you're a good person. It seems right to say that you're okay with God, even though you're against the Bible. You're not, a, you're not a Christian. It seems right. You live in this country. You think you're okay with God. Just what? Because, because you live here, because you're at college, because you get an education that makes you right with God, that makes you worthy of heaven. You think you're going to go to heaven, living in grateful no, dead, living in sin? No, you'll end up in hell. I reach out my hand when to the wicked. No. She might come back be escaped from the fires of hell. You got to escape. You got to escape the snare of the devil. Haven't been taken captive. You've been taken captive by the devil. You're enslaved to sin. Yes, you are. You cannot be freed unless Jesus Christ makes you free. I've never felt more free in my life. How are you ever going to get free from, from pornography? How are you ever going to get free from the sins of marijuana? How are you going to get free, huh? I'm so sorry, but like, we have kids here today. Yeah. So could you just Why do you not love the kids? Why do you not want the kids to hear about Jesus? No, you don't. You want them to hear about Jesus if you did. 
That's a selfish attitude. That's not the right attitude. Everyone needs to hear the gospel. It's for all. The gospel is for all. It's to be preached on every, to every nation. How's it going? Everything all right? Yeah. Um, I'm Christy from Campus Conservation. Yeah. What's up, Christy? Yeah. Um, so they do have, this event has the entire lawn reserved. Okay. So if you'd be willing just to move the student plaza, it's between 1130 and 130, so you can still use the map yeah. and everything. Just I'm, I'm going to stand right here because I'm not on the grass or anything, so. Um, this is still kind of considered the, the lawn, but if you just. What's considered the lawn? Like where you're at. So are you sure about that? Because I don't want an issue because I have legal representation and, and I've seen the map and the lawn is the lawn. That's not where I'm standing right now. I know, but so, 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 so if you're going to try to move me without, without premise, I'm going to have an issue with that. Because I've, I've abided by all the rules. I'm not on the lawn right now. I'm not in, I'm, I'm actually facing this direction too right now. But it wouldn't matter. I could face either direction. But I understand. So. But would you be willing to? It would, okay, that's, that's a different. I really appreciate it yeah. because they do. Okay, but I, I, I want to clarify because you said this was this is the lawn. You understand what you said to me? Yes. Okay, yes. is that true? Yes. This, this is, is the lawn this where I'm standing right now. We have a plaza. <laughs> it's a. It's the what North Plaza lawn. Okay. It's all connected. But, but where I'm standing is the lawn. That's what you say. I, I call it the lawn because it's all. Okay. Maybe you should call Ruth or something because I mean that's very serious when you say that because you're saying I'm staying the lawn when I'm not. It's so, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize, Appreciate but if you'd that. be willing to move to the student plaza, okay. that would be great. Um, maybe in a little bit. Right now I'm going to stand here. Okay. So. All right. Okay. I want these kids to hear. I have a message for them too. I know, but they so, they're participating in their. It's just like if I went to a high school or middle school to preach on the street to them. It's illegal. It's fine. It's it's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't matter because of their age. You know, I, I'm I'm no, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Problem. So that's not my problem. I okay. just want them to be able to participate sure, in their. Sure, they can hear. They got the. the I'm 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 a hundred yards from that. I'm not stopping. That's where the uh, speaker is. So I mean, I'm not interfering with that at all. I actually have my smaller microphone. I mean, I'm being more than reasonable. I know. And I'm kind of moving it around. Actually, I'm preaching more in this direction. So. Maybe a little bit on move. Okay. Okay? All right. God bless you. Folks, I have a message, an urgent message. Uh, you know, the Bible says, preach repentance and the remission of sins. Repentance is a change of mind, change of attitude, change of action. And remission of sins is what Jesus did at the cross to forgive us of our sins. To give us new life, to give us an opportunity to find life when we were dead. Now, I was dead. I was living in sin. I was a, a lawbreaker. But then God came in and he showed me my error. God, he chose me. Jesus said, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you would go and bear much fruit and that your fruit would remain. The fruit of sin and the fruit of ungodliness will not remain. The Bible says it will be burned up. All the things that are, that are wicked in this world that are against uh, Jesus Christ, against the, against the gospel, that they're enemies of the cross of Christ. The Bible says their God is their belly. Their glory is in their shame. They mind earthly things. <clears throat> but our citizenship is in heaven, for which we eagerly wait for the revealing of the Son of God, who will transform our lowly bodies to be conformed to His glorious body. So Jesus came to transform our lowly bodies. You know this body we live in? The Bible says that men, they worship the, crea the creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Don't you guys worship the human body with your sexual immorality? Don't you worship those women on the internet? You worship them. You go after them. You go after them. And you need to start seeking for Jesus, seeking for, 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 what is, for what's going to create in you a clean heart. How do you get a clean heart? How do you get the Holy Spirit? Because you respond to God's love. God loves you. God loves you. He's done all he can do for you when he died for you on the cross. And now he's asking you, he's commanding you, he's pleading with you that you be reconciled to him through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. How do you get the blood of Jesus applied to your life? You know that you need the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life? Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Look, 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 I believe the Bible. I believe what the scripture says. And the scripture says, it says, being justified right freely God. by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, it says, whom he sent forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith that he might demonstrate at the present time his righteousness. God is righteous. God is righteous. And don't lie, young man. Don't lie about that. Don't lie. I have a full-time job, people. I don't come out here to sue you. You don't have any money anyways. You don't have any money anyways if I did sue you for hitting me, okay? 
Just wake up from your delusion. I'm here because God sent me. I'm here today because I believe the scriptures. I'm a born again Christian. I'm a born again Christian. I was just like you guys. I was a, I was lost in my sin, lost in dying in my drunkenness, a partier. But then God, God, I realize who God is. God is. God was, he's forever. You know, you know, Jesus Christ, he said, I am the one who is and who that. was. You said you were Jesus. Yes, you did. You're not Jesus. You're not the one who is and who was and who is to come. You're not the one to come. Jesus is coming back on the clouds of heaven to take vengeance on those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Dude, you, want to feel my you, power? You, you, you guys are going to be destroyed by Jesus when He comes back in your sin and your lesbianism, Jesus, your homosexuality. You don't agree, you're agreeing with the two. That's the problem. But God says agree with your adversary while you're along the way with Him. Lest your adversary deliver later. you to the judge the judge deliver you to the officer, and the officer will throw you into prison, and you never get out. You know, Jesus said, make peace with God. He's your adversary right now, is he not? Is God not your adversary in your sin? Is he not against you and your, 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 your pornography is against you? Yes, he is. The Bible says, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God, young people? Here, don't be a friend of this world. You're the enemy of God. Don't believe in homosexuality, sexual perversion. Marijuana smoking, it's all from the devil. Don't follow this wicked way. You guys have a, you're young. You have a choice that you can make. Follow the Bible. Jesus is Lord. He's coming back to judge the world. Don't be judged and thrown into hell. Hell is a real place where there's weeping and wailing and torment in hell. But heaven is real too. God has power to deliver you from the perils of death and make you alive into heaven. You need to come to heaven. Go to heaven. Don't escape the judgment of hell. Hell. Hell is coming to earth. You know? I took time out of my day to come here because I know the danger that you guys are in. How am I in danger? You're the one who's dressed inappropriately out here. You're not covered up. The women out here dress in booty shorts. I'm the one in danger. I'm the one in danger. I do what the Bible says. How am I in danger? She's wearing booty shorts. Yes, she is. Is she not? Is she not wearing booty shorts? She's in danger. She's, she's incurring lust. She's incurring lust. Then now you're in danger too because you just cussed. I come today because I used to live like this. I used to wear the muscle shirts and use foul language and do the things that you guys are doing, but now I'm forgiven. Now I'm changed by God. I have a testimony of love in my life. I love you. You got to find, you got to follow mercy. I love you. Follow truth. I follow the truth. I tell you the truth. Oh, Why am I your you enemy? Why am I your enemy? Because I tell you the truth, huh? Away. Don't you understand what the truth is? You know, Jesus said, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you, you will know the truth. You'll be my disciple. No, I'm not Amish. I'm a Christian. I'm a man of God. I follow God. I don't deserve it. If it wasn't for Jesus, I'd be a sinner. I'd be a sinner forever. I'm chief sinner. I've broken God's law. I come today to tell you about God's grace. How do you get God's grace? How do you get what God can only give you, forgiveness of sin. Don't think that you can forgive yourself. That's a demonic New Age teaching. Oh, sister, just forgive yourself. If you'd only forgive yourself. Oh, lies. Lies. The only one who forgives sins. The only one who pardons sins and gives a new body. When you die, if you're in Christ, you get a new body like the angels. You can never die anymore. I want you to have a new body that can neither die anymore, that is no more vile. Your body, our bodies are vile. They're fallen bodies. You know, we're in sinful flesh. That's why there's diseases. That's why there's pain, sorrow, suffering because of sin. But Jesus Christ destroyed the works of sin in your own life. That's the gospel. We're not worthy. Why are you, why are you continuing in the, in the flesh? In the flesh. Is that an excuse to flaunt your body around? So everybody can lust after your body because you're born naked? I lust after your body every day. A baby doesn't know that it's naked. You know that you're naked. You know that you shouldn't be doing that. She's not naked. She's saying that babies are born naked, almost like an excuse to show your body off. Yo, you, 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 know, you know what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden? God made them animal skins to cover themselves up. Cover your bodies up, women. You know, I love it when there's cold weather because the women have a tendency to put on more clothing. You know, you know that's the problem. 
in Florida. It's the bikini lifestyle that you guys are living. It's the, it's the, it's the you know, it's this, this fleshly, lewd lifestyle. There's no excuse for sin, folks. Do you asexually reproduce? You know, the sin, the sins that, that you and I have committed, they put Jesus on the cross. Jesus had to die once for sins. The just for the unjust, that he might bring us near to God. He wants to bring you near to God. Don't you understand that? That purpose and plan of Jesus Christ, that he is able to draw you near to God even though you were afar off, that you were a wandering star, that you have gone your own way, that you, were, that you have cursing and bitterness in your mouth. Look, 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 we've all, we've all fallen down this path. We all are guilty. But Jesus Christ and his abundant mercy, you know, his power and the treasure of God. Jesus said, he said, don't put your treasure where moth and rust can destroy, where thieves can break in and steal. But wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Don't put your treasure in, the, in your youth. Don't put your treasure in your college degree. Don't put your treasure in money. That's where your heart is. Jesus said, put your treasure in the heavens. Put it in the heavens. Where moth and rust cannot destroy, where no thief breaks in and steals. Look, my treasure's in heaven. You guys might understand why I'm here, but it's not. My treasure's not for you. It's not for now. It's in heaven. Because I know that somebody's here in this word. It's penetrating their heart. And they hear the voice of the Son of God. They'll live. They'll live. Because I don't speak my own accord. I don't come my own glory. I speak as of sincerity, as from God. I speak in the sight of God in Christ. Jesus is the Christ. Oh, that's the plan of God. To give us Jesus Christ. He said, I will send you Jesus the Christ. The baby in a manger. Emmanuel, God with us. He came down from heaven to destroy the works of the devil. The works of the devil. The works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness. Fornication. Sex out of marriage. How much sex out of marriage is going on in the college campus? Yeah! Yeah! Porn! Yeah! That's your shame. The glory's in their shame, man. Young women, I wouldn't date this guy right now. He's not, he's not ready to be a husband. Yeah, I'm a husband. I'm faithful to my wife by the grace of God. I wasn't, though. You know, I, was, I used to look at pornography, cheating on my wife and my heart. But then God convicted me. Yeah! I found the fear of God. I found the fear of the Lord. And God, I tremble now at this commandment. I tremble at what Jesus Christ accomplishes. Because you can reverse when God acts. Are you going to be able to reverse if God throws you into hell and says, oh, you're done. You're, you died. You lived your life. You denied the Bible. Now you're going to go to hell. Are you going to be able to reverse that? Do you have an arm like God? Can you thunder with a voice like his? Who can mediate between you and God? Can you baptize me? Huh? Can you baptize Who can mediate you, young people, when you die in your sin? The mediator is now. Jesus is the mediator between God the Father, the judge of judges, the rock of ages, the ancient of days. Are you ancient in your days? I'm ancient as You're probably 20 years old. You've never been around that long. You're not, you're not ancient of days. I'm not ancient of days. God has more wisdom. He has more authority. He has more godliness, righteousness. Everything is his. He possesses all things. He's the master, king, immortal God, invisible. And what are you doing with, the, with this word? What are you doing? You're in an age, a time of falling away, are you not? Have you not seen what's going on on the internet? Have you not seen? Jesus. Have you not seen or your eyes shut? Your eyes shut to the truth. Don't be shut, young people. You know, don't be shut out of God's kingdom. Because, because when Jesus said, I came to you and you did not answer me. I, I came to you and you did not visit me when I was in prison. Jesus said, when I came and I was in trouble, you did not help me. Kids over there, bro. Yeah, you need it. You're, you're a child. You're a child, are you not? You're a young person, are you not? Oh, uh, yeah, they need it too, man. You need it more than them probably because you know better. You, you, you people know better. You know that your, your homosexuality is condemning you. There's no excuse for gay pride. There's no excuse for that before a holy and righteous God. Not at all. It's a sin. You know it. Exactly. It's a sin. It's a sin, yeah. So, so, so when you repent of homosexuality, you become an ex-homosexual. Yeah. When you repent... Of, of, of pornography indulging, you become an ex-porn watcher. That's what I am. I'm an ex-porn watcher. I vowed against it. I said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, go and sin no more, and I will. Go and sin no more. What's impossible with man is possible with God. It's impossible. You can't do it. You're not going to be able to get free of your sin without Jesus. Get it in your head. 
He's the one who delivers the, 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 the prisoner. Make it a good one, man, because I'm not going to entertain your mocking if you're going to mock today. Go ahead. No, I was saying like... Because you mocked me last time. I understand. Okay. Okay. I was actually going to see what you were going to do with him standing so close so much. Nothing, man. No, I'm not doing anything to him. I love this man. I, yeah, I love you too, man. No, you don't. You can't love me because you don't love Jesus. I say that this man does not love me because you don't know what love is if you don't love Jesus first. Ruth, how you doing? I love Jesus. Hi, good. Can I talk to you for just a second? Sure. Awesome. You want to come over here? Sure. Sorry to interrupt. No problem. I know you got your thing going on. Sure. Let me, let me, let me just pull this down from my mouth. Yeah, here. yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, I don't know, Christy, I think, explain. So, yeah. the Literacy Festival has the entire lawn reserved. Sure, sure. Well, you're not on the lawn, obviously. Okay. Um, what we would ask, because they really do want to bring a lot of the kids over here. They've got more coming out. Would you mind going over to the plaza <laughs> until 1.30? So, Just give me a little bit, because I mean, these kids, students are listening. I'm pointing it away from the lawn. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I, no, I, I, no, I. That's okay, but they want to bring the kids over here. So well, if you can just go over, like, by the planters well, for now. Why that don't we would wait, really help. wait? Let's wait until that happens. <laughs> well, they want to bring them over here now. I just talked to their organizer, because if they were going to be. If they if they were going to stay over there, I wouldn't have bothered you at all. That's why I went over first, right? Ruth, you've always been a sweetheart to me. I. I, we I try to work together, right? I. I can't leave these students. Look at them all. They're they're listening They'll to me. They'll follow you. I promise. I don't know. Let me. <laughs> they let me, let me, always do, don't they? Feel, not always. Not always. Let me feel it out a little bit. Give me a little bit more time. Give me a little bit more time. I'm gonna give you like three minutes. Come on, Ruth. Come on, Adam. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to fight you on this. I mean, I don't. Either, I mean, you know, we work I know, together, right? You know, if you got something written, you been out here if you got forever, something written, right? show them it to me. I, I I really I really just I I have to stand my ground. You know that. I do. But I do. but I have to you try know, to be I reasonable. You your right like you anybody do. else. You yes. do, but but I mean, you know, obviously this this is kind of one of those areas I think I might be able to fight you on. I, I don't. So here so here's the policy. <laughs> so you know where I'm coming from. Right? Yeah, and I can't so interrupt them and, and that's why I'm I'm pointing to get I'm pointing it away from them. Exactly. Plus I'm using this and not the big bullhorn, you know. So and I'm willing to even maybe shut this off. I mean, obviously I have to at 1.30, but... Yeah, at 1.30. So. so all I'm asking is that you go, like, you see where the planters are? If you just kind of go on the other side of that line, another 15 feet, well, everybody's right here anyway, so... Well, if I, if I decline, what are you going to do? Then I have to make you move, and I don't want to. How are you gonna that. make me move? I have to call the police. Well, you can. Don't want to they, 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 if, if, if no, they, if they, if they can that. uphold that, then I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna give me, they're gonna threaten me with arrest. At which point, you know, I have to move. But it, they, they know better than to make that threat if I'm not breaking the law. So I'm just saying that because when it comes down to you're it, not breaking the law. When it you're just breaking the university policy. Well, that is a law. Which we're trying that, to that would, that would be, call. that would be yeah. breaking the law, and they would have grounds for either arresting or citing me. In which case, they would have to make that claim. So. And we don't this, want to go down that road. Well, I, I don't, but I, I feel like I feel like you know that, that my rights are protected standing here. I do. You bet. Unless you have something right, you, you can bet. show me. So I give me give me a little bit of time, and I'll consider it. That's the best I can tell you. <laughs> if you want to call the police, that's you it. Met Adam, you know we're not. I know, I know, but I don't have a problem talking with the police. Young Adam, people. I think I need to buy him. <sighs> young people, you know the Bible says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. You know, you know this is a serious thing. You know, the, the, you know, it, it's a point on demand to die once, and after this, the judgment. You know, judgment's going to come. And the day of the day of death is going to come. It's the end of our lives, and then we, then we stand before God. You know, you know, the Bible says it says the books are going to be opened. The dead are going to be judged by the things that are written in the books. Well, what's in the books? What's in the books of your life, huh? What is what's going to be in the books when they're open and then when we're judged? You know, will will you be found faithful? Will you be found at peace with God? That's what you need is peace. It can only come through Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's the prince of peace. There's different princes in this world. The Bible says there's principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age. Jesus is called the prince of the peace of God's kingdom. You know, there's a kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of the devil, the prince of the power of the air that works in all the sons and daughters of disobedience. Don't be a son or daughter of disobedience and end up in the kingdom of the devil. Be a son or daughter of peace, that you might come to Jesus Christ who made peace at the cross. The Bible says that he made peace through the blood of the covenant of his cross. But there's no peace. The Bible says, save my God for the wicked. There's no peace for you, for you and your wickedness. You know, the Bible says, says, though a sinner does evil a hundred times and his days are prolonged, it says, surely I know it shall be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Though his days be prolonged, they're like a shadow. And you know, you know, that's the problem. You see, now that you're in your sins, your days are a shadow. And you have no peace in them. You have no, 
You have no fulfillment in them. You have, you have nothing, there's no purpose or meaning. Everything that your life is about is meaningless right now. And the Bible says that, that your, your days are going to pass away. It says you'll, you'll fade away into nothingness. You'll fade away into darkness. And it says that, that you'll say, oh, how I've come to ruin in the midst of the great assembly. This is the curse that you and I are under without Jesus Christ. Ruin. Ruin. Destruction marks their ways, the Bible says. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace they have not known. Their feet are swift to shed evil. They're swift to run to evil, folks. Swift. Yes, we have been swift to go to our own sins. But God got it a plan from the beginning, the Bible says. He, the Bible says, receive of the kingdom which I prepared before. Uh, for you before the foundation of the world. What is the kingdom that was prepared before the foundation of the world? It was, it was, it was the gospel. That was, that's the kingdom. It's called the gospel of the kingdom. I moved over a little bit. I see. I I'm see inching. Yeah. I'm inching that way. Yes, yeah, since nobody's here, I'm like, this would be a great time to be able to move I'm inching a little, a little bit, bit, but yeah. I'm going to stand over here. Yeah. I, think, I think this is a good compromise. Because you can go, yeah, if you can just go right over here. That way. Cause I'm going to stand, I'm gonna stand here over here. If you want to call the police, go ahead. I, I, I have no problem talking to them. So, folks, you need to repent. Adam. You need to repent. I'm not breaking any laws, Ruth. No, you're not. Okay. I'm not saying well, then, 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 then leave saying, me alone. <laughs> that's the I'm bottom saying, line. No, I'm you're interrupting. Now you're not. Now, if, if you, if you keep going, you're going to be interrupting me, and that's that's disrespectful. Because I'm here to preach, and I and I, I have you're a calling. The other no, I'm not. I am not, Ruth. Actually, because I have a right to be here, and this is do, and this I'm is more important than their event. That's the bottom line. But my my message is is the most important message on this campus today because it has to do with the the destiny of people's souls. Your soul is precious. Your eternal destiny is precious. You know, God does not want you to perish in your sins. He wants you to obtain salvation, which is in Jesus Christ the Lord. The Bible says that there is salvation in no other name. For there is no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. We must be saved through the name of Jesus Christ. I come today to extend my hand to you that you might be saved. That you might find salvation through Jesus Christ. You know, that's what you need. You need the name of God. Call upon the name of God. Make him your focus of your life. Don't make this, don't make your pride, selfish ambition, and, and vanity the focus, the things that don't endure. What endures? What lasts? You know, love. Love lasts. True love. You know? You know, the Bible says that these, these, these three things remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. I know biblical love. I know the true love of God because I know him who first loved me. God loved me. God loved you in your sin. And that should terrify you. That should terrify you that God loves you enough to look over your sin. Because one day he might let you go on and pay the penalty of your sins. And then it's too late. At that point, there's no coming back. There's no coming back on the day of judgment and, and getting it right. And accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today is the day of salvation, the Bible says. Don't harden your heart as they did in the days of rebellion. The people of God. There were people of God who rejected God's plan for them. And it says they were shut out of the promised land. You know, what is the promised land? That's when you die and you go into paradise. That's a promise from God that you could go into, into, into uh, you know, fellowship, communion with Him. The sanctuary of God. There's a throne of God. There's a place where poor angels dwell. And they sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Don't you want to be an angel? Don't you want to be a minister of God? A worshiper of God and the kingdom of God planted in the pillar in the house of God. Don't be in the house of a harlot. Quit being in the house of, 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 of evildoers. They'll be cut off, the Bible says. Evildoers will be cut off from the earth, the Bible says. But those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the land. You waiting on God, the meek shall inherit the earth and delight themselves in the abundance of peace. I'm going to delight myself on that day when the wicked are cut off. And there's peace on earth restored. No more of this turmoil. No more of me having to lock my door because of the thieves out there. No more of me needing to have insurance and all these things because God has restored the earth and brought it back to its original state, the Garden of Eden. This is no Garden of Eden out here. You guys are eating from the forbidden fruit, you young people. You're eating from the forbidden fruit of, of, of uh, illicit sex. You're eating from the forbidden fruit of marijuana. The forbidden fruit of drug use, of uh, cigarette smoking, drunkenness and partying, it's forbidden fruit. You need to eat from the fruit of the tree of life. The tree of life, which comes from a lifestyle 
a commitment to God, an honoring of God, that you worship and extol God and give thanks to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is the will of God for your life? That you would give thanks in all things to Jesus Christ our Lord. He's worthy of thanks. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. He did what no man could do as he took the sins of the whole world upon himself. And he cried and he trusted in God. He didn't even revile when he was reviled. He committed himself to him who judges righteously. The Bible says, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. God, God is able to bring the, the plans, his purposes of your life to pass. That you, that, that you might know him who is righteous and good, huh? Nice new setup. I've always had this. Yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah, the over there. Oh, he needs a new one. Look, folks, God can bring it to pass. God can bring forth, the Bible says, He can bring forth your righteousness like the light and your justice like the noonday. God can fulfill your purpose, make your cause godly instead of it being ungodly. You know, you know, the, you know a lot of you students, you're activists for homosexuality, you're activists to legalize marijuana, you're active in these things. But why would you be an activist for Jesus? Why would you promote the things that God promotes and hate the things that God hates? I love the things that God loves. I hate the things that God hates. That's in agreeing with God. That's the word confession. You know, when, when the Bible says confess your sins, you know what that word confession means? It's the word homologios. It means to say the same thing. You say the same thing as God. You say, yes, God, I will agree with your precepts. I will agree with your laws. They are good. They are, they, are, they are perfect. The law of God is perfect, converting the soul. The soul needs a converting through the law of God. It needs a revelation from Jesus Christ. Only he can reveal. Only Jesus can reveal the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. I'm here today to asking God to reveal to you where you are headed today. Don't be deceived of your flesh. You live after the flesh, the Bible says you're going to die. You're going to die. You know, death is an image of hell. Gay pride is an image of hell, death. Pride brings death. You know, pride comes before a fall and the haughty spirit before destruction. Lesbian women are five times more likely to have over 50 sex, male sex partners than straight women. That's proven, proven fact. That woman who's a lesbian, she is five times more likely to sleep with over 50 male sex partners than over a straight woman. That's, that's, that's the fruit of a lesbian woman. Promiscuity, even with men. Bisexualism. They're confused. They're confused. They don't understand what their body parts were made for. You know, an anus was not made for penetration. It was made for defecation and flatulation. That's why an anus does not lubricate on its own, folks. But you people ignore it. You ignore God's design. And you act like God is going to ignore this grave sin. God did not ignore Sodom and Gomorrah's sin. He sent down angels to see if it was true what was going on in these cities. And then he sent fire and brimstone. And he destroyed, it says, those wicked sinners. What's God going to do to this ungodly world? If that's what he did to Sodom and Gomorrah, huh? What's God going to do to America? What's God going to do to FGCU campus? Huh? What's God going to do to this ungodly world if they don't repent? You know, the Bible says it will be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for these cities, these people who did not repent at the preaching of Jesus Christ. You know, you, 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 if you don't repent at the preaching of the Bible, the Bible says it's more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't get all this opportunity that you're getting right now. They didn't get you know, the Bible written and published and given to us in all these languages and broken down line upon line, precept upon precept, young people. They didn't get that. But you, you have been given a great opportunity. A great light has shown, it says, that those who sit in darkness in the shadow of death, you know, you sit in darkness. You sit in darkness. God knows that you're, you're dark. Your understanding has been darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in you, because you being past feeling have been given over to sexual immorality to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have been taught by Him 
concerning the truth that is found in Him, Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and you be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and you put on the new man, who's a created according to God in true righteousness and holiness, the Bible says. So the Bible says that when you get a revelation of Jesus, when you're taught of Jesus, you put off the old man, which grows corrupt. Hi again. Good. You're fine. Thank okay. you so much. I appreciate okay. it. I went back and talked to them. They appreciated you turning the mic. That's the what I think way. I'm going to do is just keep and it pointing okay. this way. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, um, you know where my office is, right? Okay. So I do want to kind of go over this with you when you're not in your own time. Actually, I don't know where your office is. Oh. Never been there. Cohen Center, first floor. Cohen Center, so, is that this building? Um, the next one over, okay. the student union building. Okay. If you go to the information booth right in there, they'll okay. tell you. And that way, when it's not on your time, I don't want to take up your time. Sure, sure, your yeah. thing. Um, but that way we can go over the stuff. So if this occurs again, you kind of, of course, know where we're coming from. No problem. If there's something written, I have to buy it. That's why I was asking if you want to show it to me now. But yes. I, I'll take a no, little bit of time. but I'm going to respect you. know, since they're happy, I'm going to respect your time okay. and you do your thing. Okay. Okay? okay? All, right. All right. Thank you. God bless you. You know, folks, the Bible says, it says, you know, you know, the day is at hand. Cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. You know, today is the day. Don't put it off, young people. Don't put off the day of the Lord. Don't put off. You think you have, this, you have all this time to get it right, and, and you're not ready. You're not ready in your sin. You're not ready to meet God. You're not ready to die in a car crash or die in some calamity, drug overdose, or something bad could happen to you. You're not ready to go on in your life without Jesus, living your life, ignoring the Bible, ignoring the truth. You're not ready. You don't, know how to, you don't know how to live life the way God has ordained life. You can't be married and have a, have a successful marriage without Jesus. You can't do anything apart from Jesus. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. If any branch does not remain in me, it says it is cast out and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire. He who abides in me and I in him will bear much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. Apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. There's only, there's only sin, you know, lying at the door. Oh, folks, this is, uh, this, is, this is what you need is to understand what Jesus did for you. The accomplishment of the cross. You know, you know the Bible says, I, God did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with the wisdom of men, lest the cross of Christ be made of no effect. The cross can be made of no effect when I preach with the wisdom of men. Because the message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross, what Jesus did at the cross, the amazing love, the amazing power when Jesus overcame death, when he defeated death, the perils of death, the pit, the pit that we slide into in death because of sin. There's a pit going to suck you in. It's going to suck you into the grave. It's going to suck you into perdition, the Bible says. Don't be a son of perdition. Don't be a son of destruction. Don't be children of disobedience. Prepare beforehand for destruction. Turn to the living God. Turn to Him in the light. Walk in the light, the Bible says, as He is in the light. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, it says the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. All sin. That means you don't have to go on in sinning. God can purify you when you're in the light. When you walk in the light of His glory, of His countenance, God has a glorious countenance, a place where they worship God. They worship God in the light. The saints go worshiping God. They give glory to the one who created them. Yes, the Bible says, give glory to the Lord your God. Before He comes and He rains down darkness upon you, before your feet stumble on the dark mountains and while you are looking for light, he turns it into darkness and makes it the, uh, the dense darkness, the shadow of death. Give glory to the Lord your God before you end up in darkness, while you're looking for light, while you're looking for truth. I know some of you look for truth. Some of you search for the truth because you know you're going to die. But truth is staring you in the face today. It's Jesus Christ. I'm not Jesus. I'm a messenger of Jesus. I have the word of Jesus. And God inhabits the praises of His people. God inhabits the message. The Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God. And the Word uh, was with God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory as the only 
be a glory of the only begotten Son of God.